Uh, welcome, good afternoon. Welcome to Besides Las Vegas. Yay! Whoa. This talk is given. Oh, video recording, live streaming. Yes? That's good. Got the thumbs up. That's Thank you guys. Uh, we'd like to thank our, th our sponsors, especially the Inner Circle, Critical Stack, and Valley Mail. Also, our stellar sponsors who are Silence, Microsoft, and Robinhood. Uh, cell phones, please be courteous. Put them airplane mode for a few minutes, okay? Uh, feedbacks are available on the website. Uh, with further that, I'd like to introduce our speaker, uh, Vanessa Frost is currently a cyber security graduate student working with Dr. Kevin Butler at the FIC Research Lab at the University of Florida. Her research interests include protecting consumer data privacy from third parties, eliminating the effectiveness of mass surveillance techniques. Let's give a hand. Thank you for the introduction. And big thank you to B-Sides for this opportunity. Uh, one small correction, not the MIT lab, I wish. Uh, I'm from the FIX lab, the Florida Institute of Cybersecurity at the University of Florida in Gainesville. So a little bit more about me. I'm a third year PhD student, uh, again, interested in con protecting consumers mostly. I got into the PhD gig because I was super concerned about data mining, mass surveillance of populations, that whole thing. And this research is part of what came out of questions that I had. So today, we're going to be talking a little bit about DES. That might surprise some of you because it's 2019. Why the hell are we still talking about DES? Let's get into it. So a little bit of background. Before we had the advanced encryption standard, AES, we had the data encryption standard. So the data encryption standard is the evolution of an algorithm developed by IBM in the early 70s. Uh, just as a note, there are three flavors of DES. There's the OG, DES 56. That has a 56-bit key. There's triple DES, which is DES three times with a 168-bit key. And then there's DES 40. Now, the US treats encryption algorithms as ammunitions. So in order to export DES to other countries, we had to make a weaker version. And DES 40 was our solution for that. So DES 40 is DES with a 40-bit key. Now, DES 56 was publicly brute forced in 1997 by participants of the DES challenge. Shortly after that, NIST suggested using triple DES as a temporary replacement. With a longer key length, it was more resilient to brute force attacks. Shortly after that, DES 56 was deprecated, and triple DES followed just last year. All right, who cares? Some standards committee deprecated DES. Why should we care? Hopefully, because we're security enthusiasts, we should care. Uh, encryption using DES 56 can be broken in just seconds. DES 40 with a much smaller key length can be broken less than half a second. And triple DES uh, has sweet 32 attacks. So sweet 32 is an attack that utilizes what's called the birthday bound of block ciphers. So say that you have a cipher with a block length of n bits. The birthday bound of that cipher would be 2 to the n over 2. Basically what that means is that if you have n ciphered blocks, you would need about 2 to the n over 2 blocks to find a collision between two of them. So using these attacks, researchers were able to find a collision between blocks in less than 25 minutes. Now, aside from that, there are also downgrade attacks, which will roll back the version of TLS you have to probably an earlier version that may only support DES ciphers. And uh, there are also middleman servers that exclusively advertise DES servers for handshake negotiations. So you're locked into using DES encryption. All right, it's been 22 years now. Where is DES? 22 years since it was cracked. Is it still out there? We weren't the only ones curious about this. There is some prior research that looked at recorded connections from 2012. Uh, this first paper finds that 1.4% of connections are using triple DES. And it went down last year and only 0.3% of connections, which is great. We're going down, that's the direction we need to head. Second paper takes a look at DES 56. Um, there were DES 56 accepted handshakes in 0.9% of connections. Uh, in just last year, and now, according to their website, that's less than 0.015% today. So, looks like we did it. Deprecation of does works. We don't have to worry about it anymore, right? Not so fast. So these pre uh, prior papers looked at a passive analysis of existing connections that they observed over time. That means they're looking at what servers did in the past. 
not necessarily what servers are capable of doing. We wanted to know if servers were still supporting DES, not necessarily using them. So in order to do that, we first have to understand how a TLS connection works. In a TLS connection, when a client wants to connect to a server, it'll send a, server hello, a client hello, as well as a list of Cypher suites that client will support. The server will re receive this, send a server hello, and choose the strongest Cypher suite to encrypt with that they have in common with the client. Now, for pr purposes of our research, we don't care about what happens after this. This is important because there are 36 different DES ciphers that could be used in an encryption handshake, in an encrypted handshake. So if you want to find out if a server is supporting this, you have to query it with just that cipher. One IP address, 36 times. So in order to figure out if servers support, are supporting this in any efficient manner at all, we had to come up with a sort of strategy. Now first, we needed to get a list of IP addresses. Just querying randomly, random IP addresses that may or may not exist wasn't going to get us anywhere very fast. So uh, thanks to the generosity of some researchers up at the University of Illinois, they gave us access to their census database. Now, census uses a tool called ZMAP to probe IP addresses that may be online. It will send a hello. If that server responds, they will cut the connection with it with a reset packet and store that IP address as something that is responsive online. So we um, were able to pull a list of 41 million IP addresses that were responsive on port 443 from census and query them. Next, we needed uh, some sort of program or automator that will query these IP addresses with these 36 different DES ciphers for us. So the automator that we created will take this massive list of IP addresses, split it up into a bunch of different sublists, and hand it to these worker threads. Now the worker threads will take each IP address in that list and query it with a DES cipher. Each one, one at a time, 36 times. It will store the result as a JSON and then we can analyze it using PySpark. All right, so 36 ciphers times the 31 million IP addresses that we were able to query is 1.1 billion handshakes in a period of about six months. All right, numbers, I'm boring you. What did we find? Over 40% of servers worldwide still accept some form of DES cipher. Yep. I'm going to be going through a lot of graphs and a lot of maps now, so feel free to jump in with questions that you have. You don't have to wait till the end. All right, so over 40% of servers we queried accepted some form of DES cipher, with triple DES being uh, vastly most supported. It was just deprecated last year, that's probably to be expected. However, we did see a substantial and worrying amount of DES 56 and DES 40 being used. We also wanted to know, what about the top sites? These sites, the 40%, may be from servers that never get upgraded, that were connected once upon a time by some guy who was tinkering around in his basement and forgot about his Windows PC forever. Not quite. The top 1,000 of Alexa websites still accept, or 34% of them still accept some form of DES cipher. And the breakdown for the ciphers that get accepted is about the same. Triple DES is definitely overwhelmingly more supported. But we also did something a little bit uh, cooler that I think I really appreciated. I was curious to know who was accepting DES ciphers. So we ended up taking uh, location data from census that were tied to these servers and mapping them per cipher to the countries where these servers lo are located. So these maps are going to be a percentage of whichever cipher is accepted um, over how many servers are in that country. Now there are a couple of uh, countries that are striped out. These are countries for which we had fewer than 100 servers reported. We left them out just to be as accurate as possible. Um, so as you can see, most countries do not support DES 40, with the notable exception of Kazakhstan here, with a 32.7% of their servers accept DES 40. Next up is Liberia with 17.8. Now, without getting legal uh, an analyses and uh, policy experts, we can't really say for certain why Kazakhstan and Liberia accept so much DES 40. Um, we have uh, looked online at why this might be the case. A lot of countries have either legislation or unofficial policies governing what encryption, uh, I guess, standards they're following. 
So in instance, for Kazakhstan, they require both ISPs and individuals to assist in government surveillance. Don't want to be too speculative. That's just something that I'm throwing out there. But there seems to be a lot of evidence to that fact. <laughs> but it's OK, guys. All right, now we have does 56. Uh, we have Niger in the lead with 24%, Liberia with 19%, Canada with 14%. Sorry, Canadians. <laughs> Absolutely blame Canada after three more slides. All right, and now we have triple does, the problem child. Uh, this is where our 40% comes from. The majority of countries support does triple does on 40% of servers at least. Uh, and we, we do see typically a pattern. We see countries that support a little bit of does 40, and then a little bit more does 56, and then a buttload of triple does support. Again, probably to be expected, it was just deprecated last year. If we pulled this in 15 years time, hopefully this map would look a lot more like does 56. Uh, we do see some patterns that, or some countries that don't fit this pattern. For example, Kazakhstan supports actually less triple does than they support does 40. Not to single out Kazakhstan, it was just a fun country to like look at. We also wanted to know, are there any countries that are contributing some sort of imbalance here? Uh, we can see the percentage per country, but worldwide, 40%, really? The answer is, yeah, yeah there is. The US, uh, either because they, they were the most servers that we could reach or because it just has a buttload of computers compared to the rest of the world, had um, the most acceptances out of any country for each cipher. So as a note, um, the countries are shaded for the total number of DES accepting servers that were found in that country. And the bubbles are just more localized points where um, some of those servers were aggregated. Uh, just as a note, there were some very small bubbles that we had to cut just in order to be able to render these maps. And there were some very large bubbles we had to cut that are still represented by the shading of the country just so we can read the map. So even though Kazakhstan supports a higher percentage of DES40, the US supports their own export cipher more than any other country. Oh, yeah. Uh, no. So where we got this geographical information from the servers is not necessarily super accurate. Um, they are supposedly 99% accurate to the country the region is less accurate, and then like the city is even less accurate. So actually, for the majority of our countries, the dot that we had, the lat and longitude, was over like reservoirs and lakes and seas. Probably no servers there, I'd be willing to guess. But so we're not really sure why there's that big bubble over Florida. My initial thought was Gainesville and all of the uh, university polling that they do, possibly also NASA. Don't take my word for that at all. Yeah. All right, now we have DES 56. So Canada wasn't quite in the lead for percentage accepting, but they are second place behind the US for the number of DES 56 accepting servers that they have. And triple DES. Now, there are a lot of countries that support triple DES at 40% of servers, but the US definitely dwarfs every other country in terms of raw numbers. Uh, China comes in next. Now, there were some limitations to our study. Uh, for instance, we didn't get a chance to look at the longitudinal information for DES support. So uh, an IP address that we queried a month ago, we couldn't query today and see, are they still supporting what they did last, last month? We just didn't have the time. Uh, and next, our list of uh, IP addresses is from a single snapshot in time. That means, and, and our scan took six months, so that means that by the end, when we were getting to some of the IP addresses on the lower parts of the list, it's possible they were taken offline, they were unreachable, other machines could have cycled onto the network. We have no way of knowing. So we do include this Sankey Q 
diagram something that um, gives a breakdown of which servers were responsive and which ones weren't. So the servers that gave us unknown errors were actually responsive. It's just for some reason our client was not able to communicate with them. Could have been a configuration error on our part, could have been a configuration error on their part. There was just no way to know. Uh, we also got some IO timeouts. Uh, each IO timeout and connection timeout took us 10 seconds before it actually timed out. So the IO timeouts, these servers were actually responsive. Um, it could be the case where we would query it with one dust cipher, we'd get an IO timeout, we'd query it with another, and we'd get an accepted handshake. So we had to leave those in just to record our accepted handshakes. For the connection timeouts, these were servers that weren't reachable, that weren't responsive. And uh, in order to save time on our polling, once we got the first connection timeout, we ended up dropping all subsequent att uh, connection attempts to that server. Otherwise, we'd be spending six minutes on each IP address, which was just not feasible. All right, we've seen the map. It's everywhere. Why? Why is Dust still being used? We had a couple of ideas. One is that these people who are accepting DES may see that removing, DES, removing support for DES encryption could remove support for legacy uh, machines. And secondly, as we saw, national policy might influence which encryption ciphers get used. But we don't think that these are compelling reasons because 40% of global servers aren't legacy. The previous research has borne this out. At the highest uh, number that we saw, triple DES when 1.4% of connections, 1.4% of connections were using DES. Why are they needing 40% support? And as we saw on the raw numbers, national policy might influence what a country does within its borders, but its neighbors are not beholden to its encryption policies. So that's not the weighing factor either. Okay. We see DES, it's everywhere. We have a couple of ideas why it could be there, but they're not very compelling reasons. So how do we get rid of it? And uh, we had a couple of ideas. So first one is pretty straightforward. Maintain support for legacy users only on an as-needed basis. Take a look at your customer traffic. Take a look at what encryption ciphers they're using, what their handshakes looks like. If you drop DES support, we believe that you will lose a shockingly small number, small amount of user traffic. And the previous research has borne this out. Two, review your internal encryption policies with some regularity. Uh, as an example, OpenSSL dropped support for triple DES in 2016. And triple DES is still being supported in 40% of servers. That means either people aren't updating their OpenSSL or they're copy pasting, dragging old configuration files, or they're manually adding it back in. And if that's the case, probably nothing I say in this talk is going to dissuade you. Next, propose a cutoff point for DES support. If anybody here is familiar with the tale of the renegade YouTube team and killing IE6, you know how effective that is. Uh, as we step in the right direction, most major browsers have announced that they're going to drop support for TLS 1.0 and 1.1 by 2020, which is good news because they still support uh, DES ciphers. And lastly, we have a compelling alternative to DES. It's faster, it's stronger, it's free. It's not patented by anybody. Please use it. And now, we saw which countries were supporting them, how often DES was being supported. We wanted to know who's still supporting DES. So to that end, in the future, we're hoping to take a, finger, a fingerprint of IP addresses which do um, advertise support for DES. We have some preliminary results using reverse DNS, and what we find is that typically companies that offer services like cloud computing or leasing uh, computing power have the largest numbers of DES supporting servers. Now, we're assuming this isn't the company's practice, it's whoever they're giving these machines out to who's responsible for this configuration, but we're not sure. All right, and to summarize, DES ciphers are broken. They've been broken. They don't provide adequate security guarantees for online communication anymore. Over 40% of servers worldwide still support some form of DES cipher, with triple DES being the vastly most supported. And DES ciphers are being used less over time, which is good, and we can probably expect to see a long tail as they gradually fall out of support. And uh, we can take more proactive measures to phase out DES support completely. Otherwise, 
we risk being haunted by our past. Thank you for listening to my talk. Any questions? Yes. I'm assuming that uh, CLS 1.3 is supported in all my new browsers now and drops the support for all these old graphs. Is that correct? Yeah. So for the majority of TLS, TLS implementations that I'm aware of, you can also you can manually add support for specific ciphers or drop them. So, but yeah, TLS 1.3 by default doesn't support it does. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so the question was, is there a paper that we published um, for this research? And yes, the paper name is Examining Does Base Cipher Suite Support Within the TLS Ecosystem. We published it at Asia CCS just this year, and uh, feel free to go read it. It's got a bunch of pretty graphs in it, too. Yes? So the question... So the question was, does Suite 32 affect AES, which is also a block cipher, and are there uh, other modes of encryption for AES that you can use that'll mitigate that attack? And uh, the answer, in short, is I'm not an encryption expert, but I would assume that AES uh, is subject to Suite 32 attacks, but because AES's block cipher is much larger than DES, DES's block cipher is 64 bits, um, AES is, I think, 128. Uh, it is, l yeah, it, it will be less susceptible to those attacks. Yes. Did you probe email too, or just uh, Did I probe email too? No, we just probed uh, IP addresses that were responsive on port 443. We would like to look at email as well. That's probably why a large number of our uh, DES ciphers weren't used ever, but we didn't get a chance to. Yes. Why not port 22? Why not port 22? Um, simple answer, because we had very limited time. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. That's yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah. Who, who asked questions? Thank you. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you.